In July 2021, the government launched a consultation seeking the public's view on a review of the Equality Acts, meaning the Equal Status Acts 2000-2018 and the Employment Equality Acts 1998-2015. to The purpose of this consultation was to explore the possibility of adding new protected grounds to the Equality Acts, such as a socio-economic ground and gender identity. The review also provided an opportunity to review other issues arising, including whether or not further additional equality grounds should be added to the list of protected grounds and whether existing exemptions should be removed or modified. The ICHR viewed this consultation as an opportunity to lobby the government to include a new protected ground of health immunisation status into the Equality Acts. In order to evidence the level of suffering endured and the effects of same on members of the public as a direct result of the measures enacted by this government in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the ICHR published a survey asking members of the public to detail whether they had suffered discrimination arising from issues such as face masks and or vaccine passports. The ICHR received in excess of 26,000 responses to its survey within 16 days of its publication and presented its submission to the government on the 8th of December 2021, same being the extended closing date for submissions. The purpose of this video is to discuss the findings of that survey. At the outset, we wish to acknowledge and thank everyone who participated in this survey. We did not expect the level of response we received and we hope that this will make the survey results difficult to ignore. The findings of the survey are as follows. 26,472 people responded to the survey. Of this number, approximately 40% were male and 60% female. 48% of those who responded were aged between 36 and 49 years. It is also notable that 234 respondents were aged 18 years or less, while 1,189 respondents were older than 65 years. Those with children represented a majority of those who responded at 70%, while the vast majority of respondents, 96%, were white or Caucasian. That said, persons of other races were also represented in the survey with 126 black or African Americans, 132 being Hispanic or Latino, 119 Asian and 466 being of another race. As one might expect, a high percentage, 80% to be exact, of respondents were Irish, while the remaining respondents were English, Polish, Lithuanian, Romanian, Latvian, Brazilian, Spanish, Italian, French, German, Indian, American, etc. The first question of note in the survey, question 6, asked respondents to confirm whether they had suffered any form of discrimination since March of 2020 arising from the COVID-19 pandemic. While it is unsurprising to the ICHR, we are still alarmed to record that 81% of respondents confirmed that they had suffered discrimination, with a further 13% confirming that they have not suffered discrimination because they avoid establishments that may potentially discriminate. Those who answered in the positive to question 6 were asked to answer question 7, which requested information on the grounds under which they have suffered discrimination. Again, it came as no surprise that 84% of respondents confirmed that they have suffered discrimination since March of 2020 due to their health status, including immunisation status. It is also worth noting at this point that only 0.17% of respondents recorded suffering discrimination on the basis of their gender identity. This is worthy of note considering that the Irish government wishes to introduce a new protected ground of gender identity not least given the very serious and marked difference in recorded levels of discrimination on the grounds of gender identity at 0.17% compared to health immunisation status at 83.79%. When respondents were asked through question 8 if they believed that discrimination in the provision of goods and services was on the rise since March of 2020, 95% confirmed that they did. Further to this, 21,097 people confirmed that they have altered how they go about their daily lives as a result of this discrimination, with 22,211 people confirming that they have had to change their daily habits around shopping or dining because of this discrimination. 
Through the results from question 11, it is also clear that parents are suffering great levels of discrimination, with 50% of respondents confirming that they, as parents, have been prevented from attending school, sporting, entertainment or medical events with or without their child because of their or their child's health status, including immunisation status. This percentage is even more alarming when one considers that only 20% of respondents confirmed that they had not suffered any such discrimination, with the remaining 30% advising that they are not parents and therefore the question was not applicable to them. At question 13, we asked respondents to detail their experiences of discrimination and explain how these experiences have affected their mental and or physical health. It is worthy to note that 18,135 people provided individual accounts of the discrimination they have suffered. Next, we asked respondents to confirm if their children had suffered any form of discrimination since March of 2020 arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Half responded by saying yes, a quarter responded by saying no, and the remaining quarter said that they avoid establishments that may potentially discriminate. It is alarming to note that the government have introduced policies which have resulted in 75% of respondents to this question confirming that their children have either been discriminated against or have changed their lives to avoid the confrontation of being discriminated against. At question 17, we asked respondents if the change in their children's habits and lives had affected their mental and or physical health. 69% of respondents, meaning 12,647 parents, confirmed that the policies implemented by this government have had a detrimental impact on their children. Question 18 asked parents who answered in the positive to question 17 to detail how the mental and or physical health of their children has been affected by this discrimination. It is worthy to note that 11,956 parents provided individual accounts of the discrimination that their children have suffered arising from the policies this government have implemented due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The levels of discrimination illustrated through this survey are having a detrimental effect on families and family life, with 87% of respondents confirming that the discrimination being suffered by members of the household is creating stress and tension in the home. It should also be noted that the discrimination being suffered by individuals and families has resulted in feelings of suicide, depression, anxiety, fear, upset, isolation, stress, anger, humiliation and intimidation. Perhaps the most telling and worrying result is the finding that 96% of respondents believe that discrimination has become more acceptable within society since March of 2020, arising from the COVID-19 pandemic. Given the constant rhetoric being expelled by both the Irish government and media, suggesting that it is only right that those who exercise bodily autonomy are treated as second-class citizens or less than, it is fair and reasonable to place the burden of responsibility on such parties to remedy the legalisation of such discrimination and segregation. To conclude, it is clear in terms of 1. The number of people who responded to the survey in general. Two, the number of people who responded to the survey in such a short space of time being 16 days. Three, the results from the survey. And four, the thousands of individual accounts of recorded discrimination. That one could deduce government policy in response to the COVID-19 pandemic has created an entire new category of discrimination based on a person's health immunisation status. At no time in recent memory has it been acceptable for the political establishment to create laws which segregate a large portion of the population based on their personal health decisions. Furthermore, the confidence with which the Irish government suggests such discriminatory policies are acceptable has given life to the idea that not only should such treatment be normalised but actually glorified. The evidence gathered through this survey suggests that it has become a virtuous act to seek out the personal medical information of strangers through uncomfortable and public interrogation. The survey results also suggest that it has become socially acceptable and indeed celebrated to mistreat members of the public who are found not to be complying with government guidelines around COVID-19, irrespective of the reason for any such non-compliance. Such mistreatment comes in the form of verbal abuse and harassment, 
being denied basic services and being ostracised from social events. Many of the written responses contained in the survey refer to the stress of everyday life being magnified at the prospect of performing the most mundane activities like buying weekly groceries or attending a school event with children. The prospect of being challenged and confronted over private medical information at any time by anybody has left the majority of respondents to this survey feeling intense levels of undue stress and anxiety. Such conditions also put immense strain on the family with parents feeling hopelessly limited by their choices for fear of receiving negative repercussions which may affect them, but more importantly, their children. It is a repetitive theme throughout the survey results that such hostile living conditions would not have been made possible but for the fact our political and media establishments have helped to package and sell the idea that those who do not adhere fully to the COVID-19 guidelines, irrespective of the reason, have only themselves to blame for the way they are being treated, including but not limited to discrimination. The survey results confirm that there is a feeling amongst respondents that the Irish government and the Irish media have encouraged a change in acceptable behaviour and societal norms through laws, guidelines, radical proposals and hateful rhetoric, which has resulted in widespread discrimination being exercised against members of the public on the basis of their health immunisation status. Considering the dominance COVID-19 has over everyday life, it is reasonable to suggest that the persecution and discrimination suffered by the vast majority of respondents will not stop unless done so through legislative protection. We at the ICHR find the needless suffering of people abhorrent and completely unacceptable and we expect the Irish government to rectify the appalling increase in discrimination that has been made possible only through their actions. If you wish to view the full submission made by the ICHR in response to the government consultation on the Equality Acts, please visit the link in the description box of this video. If you are aggrieved by the results of this survey and wish to voice your dissent to this government-endorsed policy of discrimination, the ICHR are commencing a new lobby campaign today. This campaign is centred around the next extension to the COVID emergency power laws and the vaccine passport laws, which must take place before the 31st of March 2022. We are asking for your help in lobbying TDs to vote no to the extension of the Health and Criminal Justice COVID-19 Amendment No. 2 Act 2021. If you wish to participate in this lobby campaign, please visit the link in the description box of this video where you will find a template letter that you can use or adapt to send to any TD to voice your concern at the rising levels of discrimination and the divide that this is having on society and families. Finally, we wish to thank all of those who participated in this survey and given the high level of response in such a short period of time, we believe it will be difficult for the government to ignore the findings. Thanks for listening.